Hey guys, Kelsey here. I wanted to record a quick video to walk you through some of our weekly assignments um, to make sure that you're familiar with what I'm asking for. Also, quick note that I am filming this with a baby asleep on my chest because she won't sleep in her crib. Um, so, just an FYI. Um, this is the movement analysis table and you'll be able to turn these in weekly for all the weeks that we do a body part as extra credit. So this isn't mandatory, but it's really helpful for you to do on your own to better understand how the muscles work with major movements. Um, and it will help you in some of the questions on your quizzes as well that ask for this information. So as I explain it right now, some of these concepts are going to seem foreign to you. Don't worry, you'll understand them better as we go along. So let's say the movement you're trying to do is a push-up. You're trying to break down all of the joints that move during a push-up, all of the muscles that move those joints, and what actions are occurring during the concentric and eccentric phases or the action, the movement and recovery phases. So again, all these terms are going to make sense to you later. Um, so push-up. Okay, so what are the three joints that are moving? We have the shoulder girdle, often called your shoulder blades, or your scapula where they sit on your rib cage. That's moving during a push-up. You might not know it, but it is. Your shoulder and your elbow. Your wrists, while they are involved, actually just stay in place. So we're not going to include those. So the movement phase, the oomph part of the push-up, is actually when you're at the bottom pushing up. So that's the phase we're going to talk about first. So during that phase, the shoulder girdle is protracting, spreading apart. The shoulder is flexing, moving forward, and the elbow is extending, straightening out. Again, we're going to go over all these terms. Then you're going to look back at your notes, you're going to look through the slides, you're going to look into the book, and you're going to see what muscles primarily cause that action. If for a certain area there's like five muscles that cause that, just give me the two or three major ones. Sometimes that's the case in the hip, where most of the muscles of the hip actually have three actions. Um, just give me two or three. And then contraction type. Hint, this should pretty much always be concentric. And this is just to remind you that the action or the movement phase, the action during the movement phase, always involves the concentric contraction, the oomph. So in a squat, that's on the way up. We'll go over this in class. And then you're going to tell me what's the movement of the joint during the recovery phase when it's returning to position. So again, in the push-up, the way up is the movement phase, the way down is the recovery phase, and you're going to tell me, okay, so if I'm flexing on the way up, I'm extending on the way down. So hint, this is going to be opposite this one. The contraction type here should always be eccentric. And this is just to remind you that the oomph is always the movement phase. So that's easy to remember in something like a bicep curl, where you're going up on the action, where the first part of the movement is the movement phase, the, the oomph, the concentric contraction. It's harder to remember on things like squats or push-ups where you go down first, the recovery phase is first, and the hard part, the oomph, is second. So the concentric contraction is always, is typically when you're going back up against gravity. It's the hard part. It's the part where if you were doing it, you might go, that was tough, okay? Um, as you're going through this each week, select a compound exercise. Again, you'll know what that means as we go through the information. Select a compound exercise that involves the major joint that we just did. So if we just talked about the hip, don't do a push-up. Do a squat, right? Pick one per week. Um, and if we haven't gotten to all the parts of that um, exercise yet, all the joints, just do what we've covered. So let's say for the first week you want to do push-up. Well, we'll only have covered the shoulder girdle, so you don't have to include the shoulder and the elbow that week. But then next week when you go back and do it, fill those in. So you can work from the same document the whole time and just add to it week by week. So then next week I could do a row here, and then I could do a squat, and then I could do a lunge, right? You can just add to the same document, save it, and re-upload it week by week. There's an extra credit spot for you to add this each week that you do it. Again, this is not mandatory. You'll get a few points of extra credit, and it's also going to help you on your quizzes. Cool. That's your movement analysis table. The next thing I wanted to cover is your weekly discussions. So for five of our eight weeks, you have a weekly discussion, and you have two options for how you choose to do that. You can either type it out in our discussion board here, 
or you can do a video flip grid, which I'll go to next. So basically this re reflection is gonna ask you to do two things. Reflect on something you learned during the lecture. And yes, this is partly to make sure you're actually viewing the lectures, which will also be evident in your assignments and your exams, but this helps. Um, so I'm gonna ask you to share what's the most interesting thing you learned this week? What are you gonna do with it? So you have to apply it either to your own life or your future clients. So you might say, oh my gosh, I had no idea how important the gluteus medius is and how crucial it is for stabilizing the hip and reducing low back pain and knee pain. I am totally gonna use this with future clients when they're having a lot of lateral knee pain. Awesome. Please respond in complete sentences. Part two, you're gonna find one additional exercise on your own because we will go over some exercises in class and there are some for you to view each week. You're gonna find another one that addresses the body area that we just talked about. So let's say we did hips and we talked about glute bridges for glute strengthening and activation. You might go on and find um, a sideline hip abduction for glute med activation, right? You're going to find another exercise, a mobility or a stability exercise. So these are typically going to be body weight that targets that area. And then you're going to answer these questions. What is the exercise? What is its purpose? So is it promoting mobility or stability of what muscle or region? What are the prime movers? So again, let's say it was a glute bridge. Well, the prime mover for that one is going to be your gluteus maximus. It's causing hip extension. Um, and then what was the experience like? Just a sentence or so, a brief interruption there. It is a bit of a zoo around here. Um, but yeah, what was the experience like? So you're going to do the exercise and then talk about, was it hard? Was it easy? Did it feel like it was doing what it was supposed to? Just a, some sentence reflection on it. And then when would you use this exercise with a client? So I gave you the example of a clamshell with, or a a clamshell would target the glute med. So let's say you used a clamshell to target the glute med for a client that looks like they have a lot of hip instability or lateral knee pain, right? So apply this exercise, or maybe I'm just gonna use this in general as a lower body warm up, something like that. And then you're going to also respond to one classmate. So that means um, ask a follow up question, share some experience of your own with that exercise, or pose an alternative point of view. Conversely, if you don't want to type this, you can film this. So there's a link to these flip grids. It'll give you the exact same direction. You'll just come here, click record a response, and you'll be able to verbalize everything that you want to share via video. You can also respond to your classmates via video. So whatever you have technological access to and whether you prefer to write or speak, you can choose whichever option works for you. So again, this video is walking you through how to do the weekly movement table analysis, which is extra credit, and then the weekly exercise reflection, which is not. Take care.